What's up everyone, it's your boy NoranRad89 here bringing you another video and it's finally time. We are here at the last Puppet Master film, so that means of course we're going to be ranking them after that, so be prepared for that video. But like I said, now it's, it's finally time. We are done reviewing all of them. We are discussing the last one, and this one actually came out in 2018, which was before the one I just talked about, Blade Iron Cross. But I wanted to talk about this one last because Puppet Master The Littlest Reich is the only one in this franchise that is a reboot. So it has nothing to do with the canon of any of the films that we've been talking about. So I kind of wanted to go through all the films that actually take place in the same timeline first. And now, like I said, we're going to discuss The Littlest Reich, which is the only film in this franchise that is a reboot from 2018. And today we're going to go over my positives, the negatives, and then the rating. And then I'm going to send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. So Puppet Master The Littlest Reich being the reboot in the franchise, they go a completely different route with this one, totally. This is a much more hardcore, much more horror-centered slasher type film, I would say. I would kind of classify it as that kind of because Toulon and his puppets in this one are straight-up villains. They're just straight-up bad guys, and they've never really been portrayed that way before. So like I said, this is the first one where they do that, where Andre Toulon's character is actually a Nazi escaping from France and everything. And in this film, you know, he is very much a villain. He's played by Udo Kier. So that's fabulous. That's a great actor. And that's one positive. We'll lean right into the positives right away now is that Udo Kier, Thomas Lennon, and Barbara Crampton, we got a fantastic cast. I would say cast-wise, this is probably the strongest film in the franchise because there's notable faces all across the board and the acting in this one is much more serviceable and much more to a different level, you know what I mean, than some of the previous Puppet Master films. Another positive for me is, like I said, that this is actually a reboot and this is fresh, like for real. This is something that's a fresh new taste for the Puppet Master franchise. Like I said, there's their villainous puppets. They're very much evil as the setup for this one is that Toulon, he did die. Toulon's character and the puppets are now spread across the country to different people like that collect them and everything. And they all get invited to the, I believe it's the Brass Buckle Inn. They get invited there to sell their puppets at an auction and everything because these are Toulon's puppets are very rare. They're sought after items and stuff like that. So they go to this auction to sell them so there's like 40 plus puppets that are being sold at this auction and that's how the kind of story ensues as that they're all trapped there and then the puppets come to life and start just slaying everyone. Another huge positive for me is that the kill department, this one ups the ante to 11 for real. If you were to take all the other Puppet Master films and go over the kills, yes there's some decent kills, some gruesome and scary moments in the franchise, but by far this one takes that kill notch all the way up to 11 and they go for it crazy realistic practical effects very bloody very gory like I said this is the most horror and slasher centered type puppet master film that we've seen so far and man yeah they just go for it so if you're a gore hound you're definitely going to be pleased in that department and another positive for me is I kind of already talked about this is like Thomas Lennon is another actor in this film and he's just fantastic as the lead actor I think he does a great job they all do a good job and that's what one of my probably my favorite thing about this is all the notable faces besides the kills and like I said all the notable faces in this film that's like my other favorite thing about it is because the actors they're all funny I think the dialogue is actually witty and quite funny in this one there could be some things that some people might be like oh I don't know about that because there's some touchy subject matter in here because the puppets are going after Jewish people African Americans lesbian and gay couples so it's really hammering home that Nazi concept of they're going after after people that they believe are you know a sin type thing or commit sins so that's how the puppets are just hardcore evil in this one but like I said the characters the human characters are just hilarious even Barbara Crampton she is fantastic gorgeous beautiful we love her and she's always in a lot of the full moon feature films she's featured in a lot of Charlie Bands type stuff if you haven't seen her in Castle Freak that's another fantastic film you should definitely go check that one out 
So yeah, the cast is banging in this film. Let's get into the mixed and negatives because this isn't a perfect film. I definitely had a freaking awesome time with this movie, but it's not perfect. And one thing that I could say my main negative with this one is that the puppet designs and the puppets themselves, I can't stand them in this film. That's one thing I hate the fact that they changed Blade, they changed, you know, Tundler's design. I believe Blitzkrieg's in here too. And there's so many puppets, there's 40 plus. So there's just this ridiculous amount of puppets that you can't get really attached to them. Because when you've seen the puppets in the previous films, you get attached to them. They have history and they're like characters in the films as well. You know what I mean? Just as much as the human characters. You know what I mean? They have just as much importance. And in this film, they're just really just there to be killers. That's all they're there. Another negative for me with this film is definitely going to be the music. Music by Richard Band was always a key thing. And even people that came in and kind of put their own spin on it. It was always prominent and there in the Puppet Master franchise and I like the old school stuff. The music for this one, The Little Reich, definitely did not hit home at all. And one thing, this kind of goes as like a mix because I do love the fact that this is a reboot. There's a lot of gory kills in this one and they upped the Andy hardcore, but another thing that kind of goes along with that is that the story with this one is just very just slasher, basic killer story. We hate, you know, these kind of people, that kind of thing. That's it. That's literally all this film is. And there's no really meat or bones underneath it. There's nothing really to connect to. And like I said, I could have fun with this film. It's straight up slasher. It's gory as hell. But it's not a film story-wise that has much meat on the bones. But now we have to lay down a rating for Puppet Master The Littlest Right. Because like I said, I did have an enjoyable time with this film. And in terms of a rating... Puppet Master The Little Strike is going to get a 7 out of 10. That's a very solid, respectable rating. And like I said, very going to be very high on the ranking list because of the style they went for. It's something fresh, something new. And they have a really good cast in here that does a good job and delivers on their roles. Thanks for sticking around me all for this review of Puppet Master The Little Strike. And these are just my thoughts and my opinions, of course. So that means I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section. Share your thoughts so we could have a bunch of discussions. And like I said, stay tuned to the channel. Be sure you like and subscribe and have that notification bell poked. Because like I said, coming up next, we got the Puppet Master ranking video where we're going to take all 14 films. We're going to throw them in the cage and we're going to see who comes out on top. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel. But most importantly, I want y'all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.